welcome to the today's lecture of da design and analysis of algorithm in today's lesson we will discuss growth of functions we will also discuss complexity of algorithms and asymptotic analysis we will see what are the asymptotic notations available so let's see what is growth of functions to analyze an algorithm it is important to analyze the performance of the algorithm based on the input size it may be possible that an algorithm performs good on a smaller sized input but it needs to be analyzed that whether the algorithm performs in a better form when the input size increases or not so a good algorithm will be only when it will perform good even the input size increases so that's what the growth of functions will tell us where we represent the algorithm in the form of a function that will grow with the input size and we will analyze the performance of the algorithm with that growth for the purpose we have uh, to study two things complexity of algorithms and asymptotic analysis let me talk first about complexity of algorithm what we mean by the complexity complexity basically measures the performance of the algorithm how algorithm is performing we measure the complexity of the algorithms in main two uh, let's say space complexity we need to understand what is the space complexity and what is time complexity so these are the two major terms under complexity of algorithms space complexity means that how much space algorithm requires to execute and even if the size of the input increases what is the increase of the space that algorithm requires so uh, with smaller inputs and with higher inputs in both the form whenever the input size increases also we measure the space the requirement of the space and this is done with the help of the space complexity so in simple words space complexity gives us the idea that the algorithm how much space the algorithm requires in execution with smaller inputs as well as with larger inputs and when the input size increases the space complexity has two components one the fixed part and the other variable part the fixed part that depends only on the input and output but the variable part that is which depends on the type of user input it may vary that means uh, the part which vary depending upon the user input so we have two parts fixed part which always remains same and we have variable part so we need to study the space complexity under both these parts now let's talk about time complexity the time complexity gives us the idea of the algorithm that how much time the algorithm will take to execute with smaller input as well as with the growth of the input size the time complexity is basically the sum of compile time plus run time of the algorithm so it will tell us in how much time the algorithm will complete its execution and this is one of the another uh, way of measuring the algorithm performance so we measure algorithm performance in terms of space and we measure the performance of the algorithm in terms of time we measure these performances in three categories that an algorithm doesn't always perform same it may vary the performance may vary depending upon different types of inputs so we have to analyze all the sections we have to analyze all the things so we have three types of case complexities worst case complexity especially if we talk about the time complexity so worst case complexity that is a uh, worst running time of an algorithm the average case complexity and the best case complexity so whenever we measure the complexity we need to measure on all these three things worst case complexity average case complexity and 
best case complexity. So let me talk about what are these three. Worst case complexity basically tells us if we talk about time complexity. So basically it tells us that what is the maximum time an algorithm can take to give you the output. That is the worst. Obviously, the worst case will be only whenever the algorithm takes maximum time in the execution. So it will give us uh, the worst case complexity will tell us that what is the maximum time an algorithm can take on any type of input. So this is the study of worst case. Then the average case will give us an average way. Let's say what is an average time the algorithm takes in processing the input. And obviously the best case is just the opposite of the worst case, uh, which will tell us what is the minimum time the algorithm will take in giving us the output. This is the best. Obviously, whenever the algorithm performs its operations in minimum time, it's the best case. So the best case complexity will tell us that what is the minimum time the algorithm will take in giving us the output or the algorithm takes it in execution. So these are the three uh, worst case, average case and best case complexity we need to study. Let me give you an example of this. Let's say if we have an array, let's say one, two, three, four and five, the elements, the elements in the array are one, two, three, four and five. We are talking about linear search. If someone asks to search number one, so we'll start searching one and we can see it is found at first location. So immediately the algorithm will give, give us the result. So it will take minimum time. So this will be called as the best case because the algorithm will take minimum time in giving us the result. On the other hand, if someone asks what is, uh, where is the five, we have to search five. Then the algorithm will uh, compare with the first element, then with second, then with third, then with fourth, and then it will find five at the last position. So it will take maximum time in searching this element five. Now this is called as the worst case. So this is the worst case because the algorithm will take maximum time in giving us the output. And let's say if uh, someone asked to find out the element three, which is actually in middle, so this will give us the average time. So at an average, it will take this time to give us the final result or to execute. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are the best, worst and average cases we must study to get the actual performance of the algorithm. Now these performances must be measurable in mathematical terms. For that, we have asymptotic analysis. Right? We cannot say anything in words, this is best, this is worst, and this is average. So we need to analyze this mathematically. Obviously, we cannot get the exact analysis, but we need to have an idea of what is going on. For that, we use asymptotic analysis. Asymptotic analysis is important. Why? Because, because of the two reasons. One, it gives simple characteristics of the algorithm's efficiency. So it will test tell how efficient the algorithm is and then it will provide us the comparison of performances among various algorithms. So it will give us a comparative analysis so that we can choose which algorithm is performing better in this case. For example, we have lots of sorting algorithms like we have bubble, we have insertion, we have selection, shell, quick, merge sort, lots of sortings are there. So this asymptotic analysis gives us a comparative analysis among the performances of all these algorithms depending upon input type and input size. To perform this asymptotic analysis, we have some mathematical notations. These notations are called asymptotic notations. We have five asymptotic notations. These notations can also be related to these worst, average and best cases. How these relate, we'll tell later. Uh, we'll discuss later. I'll tell you in the next lecture when I'll discuss these notations in detail. So we can see that there are five asymptotic notations, big O, big omega, theta, little o, and little omega to analyze the algorithm.
So that's it for the today's lecture. In the next lecture, we will discuss asymptotic notations in detail. Thank you so much.